This thing will get you. Slow and steady, folks. Aloha and welcome back to Spike's Breezeway Cocktail Hour. There is one dude in the history of vintage tiki that we haven't covered yet. In almost two years, almost 150 videos we haven't touched on a man named Stephen Crane. Now we've heard about Don Beach, we've heard about Victor Bergeron. Stephen Crane was one of these guys who had all kinds of tiki restaurants, but it all started in 1954 at a place called the Luau. But before we get into that, Joseph Stevenson Crane was born in Crawfordsville, Indiana. After graduating college, Stephen Crane quickly moved to Hollywood, where he would star in a string of B-movies, like Cry of the Werewolf, as well as The Crime and Doctor's Courage in 1945, followed by Tonight and Every Night, starring Rita Hayworth. Yeah, so he was getting to know the people in Hollywood. He was moving and shaking. Stephen Crane was so charismatic and so handsome that he even married Lana Turner. Yeah, like one of the top hot chicks of Hollywood in that era. He married Lana Turner. Then he got divorced from Lana Turner. Then he married Lana Turner and then got divorced from her again. Yeah, weird. Two times, two times with Lana. Lana Turner even recalled meeting Stephen Crane in her autobiography. He mentioned nonchalantly that he was in the tobacco business in a way that suggested that any kind of business bored him. Certainly it seemed that he had no money worries. We chatted for hours. And by the time he took me home, took me home, I was ready to fall in love. With my weakness for a certain kind of good looks, coupled with witty charm, I took him at face value. In no time we were a pair. Only three weeks later, he asked me to marry him. Stephen Crane, man. Stephen Crane was also seen with Ava Gardner and Rita Hayworth in the 1940s and in the 1950s, Mamie Van Doren. This guy was getting all of the top chicks in Hollywood. Isn't that wild? And then in 1948, Crane married French sex symbol and actress Martine Carroll, famous for her role in Lola Montez in 1955, but they divorced in 53. In the 60s, Crane married and divorced Helen Redding and Leslie Deeb. What is with guys marrying and divorcing and marrying and divorcing and marrying? It's a wild way to go. But we're not here to talk about marriage and divorce in Hollywood. We're here to talk about cocktails, specifically a cocktail from a bar that Stephen Crane opened called the Luau. The Luau started out as the Tropics in 1936 and then Crane bought it in 1954 and turned it into the Luau. And you can even see some of my stuff over here from the Luau. These little uh, Marquesan dudes, it says the Luau on the bottom there. On the base of the thing, it says designed by Stephen Crane Associates. How rad is that? Super cool. And this menu right here, although this menu is not a cocktail menu, this is just the most beautifully illustrated menu. It's so rad. So Stephen Crane not only owned the Luau, but then he worked out a deal with the Sheridan Hotel chain. Just like Trader Vic had the Hilton Hotels, Stephen Crane was like, hey, I wanna put Contiki ports into all your Sheridans. And so that's where this pineapple ashtray. And of course on the back it says, designed by Stephen Crane Associates again. And I do have this golden swizzle from Contiki ports. So Stephen Crane may have been just a B actor, may have dated some of the most beautiful women in Hollywood, but he was enterprising and driven and uh, in love with a thing called Tiki. And recently, a viewer of the show sent me this. Can you even believe this kind of cartoonish colored Koo mug? This is what the War God cocktail was served in. Anytime somebody sends me a mug or a glass or something, I appreciate it so much. And they're doing it selflessly so that we can do this together. Let's get going. And for this cocktail, we will be using limes, white grapefruit, simple syrup, falernum, 151 Demerara rum, dark Jamaican rum, Virgin Islands rum, Pernod, and Angostura bitters. Well, we're gonna start by cutting a lime in half. We're gonna squeeze half an ounce of lime juice into a mixing tin, half an ounce of white grapefruit juice. You can see that it's still a little green. My white grapefruit tree isn't exactly ripe yet, but it's getting close. I think it'll be okay for this. And uh, I'm gonna use a bigger squeezer for the white grapefruit. Into the mixing tin. Quarter ounce of sugar syrup. Half an ounce of falernum. One ounce from the big bottle here. It was a little bit more than one ounce. Let me, uh... That went right up my nose. Oh, that's a good rum. 
It's not a whole lot of like fire to it. That's really nice. That's Cruzon, by the way. Now you get the fire afterwards, but it's not, it's not disturbing. Interesting. I've never really like tasted Cruzon on its own before. One ounce of dark Jamaican rum. We're gonna be using the Karuba for that. And Karuba is a very nice kind of well rum for a dark Jamaican. Yeah, smells great. And of course, from our buddy, Ed Hamilton, the king of corked bottles. We're gonna be using the 151 Demerara. What do you guys think about corks? Mention it in the comments below. Okay, we're gonna do six drops of Pernod. One, two, three, four, five, six. And one dash of Angostura bitters. Of course, when you dash, you wanna go all the way up and all the way down with it. Really get a good dash in there. Okay, so there's the drink. We're gonna go ahead and fill this with a couple scoops of ice. Hit it with the top-down mixer. This is a Hamilton Beach from the 1940s. Just about as traditional as you can possibly get in the way that they made the cocktails back then. Just about six seconds is all you need. You wanna froth it up and add some air to the cocktail. And then, dude, in the mug, in this mug that they serve cocktails in at the Luau in Beverly Hills. Let's do this. And I remember my mom telling me stories about going to the Luau. She said it was the most glamorous place. Oh man, look at that. Perfectly reaches the top. Now it doesn't say to garnish with anything. We're just gonna leave it like this, but maybe top it off with some more ice. We're not trying to build like a whole ice castle here, but just fill it up, you know? Okay, and then from Surfside Sips, we're gonna be using a Spikes Breezeway Cocktail Hour branded straw. If you're interested in these straws, go to surfsidesips.com, enter Breezeway in the coupon code, and you will get a discount buying straws from Surfside Sips. These great glass bamboo straws. Kind of look like crack pipes, but they're not. And so from the Luau in Beverly Hills, this is the War God. Before we get into tasting it, if you wanna help support the Breezeway Cocktail Hour, you can join our Patreon. I will send you this little enamel pin as well as opportunities to buy merch before they go on sale to the general public because it always sells out. So please consider doing that. Also hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. Let's get into this cocktail. That is a boozy, boozy cocktail. Wow, wow, wow We. It reminds me of a 151 Swizzle. There's a lot of flavors going on from the Falernum and the bitters and the Pernod. It's almost kind of like headed towards zombie land, like kind of um, like kind of a Don the Beachcomber zombie from 1934. But this is, it's a good cocktail. It is not a beginner cocktail. It is not the kind of cocktail you order at a tiki bar and go, oh, what's the, what's the fruity one with coconut in it? This is not that. Yeah, there's real spiciness up front. A lot of rum flavors. It's a good drink. It's good. It's just a lot. But imagine drinking this thing. 1954, in Beverly Hills at the Luau, surrounded by Lana Turner and Ava Gardner and Mamie Van Doren. Well, I mean, they'd all be with Stephen Crane, but imagine being there. So the Luau was located at 427 North Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills. I don't want to show you a picture of what's there now because it is heartbreaking. So let's take a look at some photos from the heyday of the Luau. You can see that you go up some steps to kind of a short ramp that is lined with some heavy duty nautical chain. Then when you get to the top of the ramp there, you're greeted with a big ship's wheel and the jade tiles that flank the front door. From what I understand, the guys at Oceanic Arts designed and, and decorated this place. After recently going to Oceanic Arts and picking up things that I won in the auction, I just have such a reverence for like the mark that they left on everything. And the guys from Oceanic Arts knew Stephen Crane. They knew Victor Bergeron, they knew Don Beach, they knew all of the celebrities of the Tiki world. And if you're interested in more of this kind of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I have like 120 other videos. Some of them talk about the history of Tiki, but some of them are just cocktail videos where we're making a cocktail or we're just hanging out talking to one of my friends who might be a burlesque performer or a YouTuber or a guy who shapes surfboards. Yeah, all kinds of people. Would I order that again if I ordered it for the first time in a restaurant? One other fun fact about Stephen Crane. 
In this menu, the Aloha section of their menu, Stephen Crane writes, you've just crossed the gangplank into another world, into a segment of paradise, or such is the illusion. That's what we always talk about. We always talk about false Polynesia, transportative escapist environments like this. Oh, dude, so rad. And truly, it is more than an illusion, for there is authenticity in the adventure you're about to experience, an adventure in drinking and dining. Oh, man. How did these things ever go out of style? What befalls you now is made of more than dream stuff. They talk about the cocktails. Our drink specialties, island symphonies. He's calling his cocktails island symphonies. Our drink specialties, island symphonies of rare and distinguished rums. Irresistibly claim your fullest respect, which is best shown by drinking slowly and reverently. Yeah, you don't want to knock these things back real quick. It's got three ounces of rum and one of those is an overproof rum. Stephen Crane does talk about himself in this, but he talks about himself as the high talking chief, Stefumba. And so he goes, when the luau was in the planning, we dispatched none other than Stefuma himself to the South Seas and the Orient to gather much of the decor from our restaurant. The chairs were found in Hong Kong. The tabletops, other than those in the bar, were authentic hatch covers. Ship's hatch covers, just like the bar top, the breezeway bar, hatch cover. Oh, the tabletops, other than those in the bar, which are authentic hatch covers. So the hatch covers are in the bar. But in the restaurant, the tables are slabs cut from giant monkey pod trees, koa, the chunks of which were brought laboriously out of the Hawaiian hills on the backs of natives and milled in Papo, pa uh, Paola? I don't know how to say that one. Koa wood tables. It must have been so gorgeous. The structural bamboo in the building has been installed and hand wrapped by Philippine craftsmen. Of special interest is the square bamboo. They had square bamboo in there. Obtained by forcing the trees to grow through square iron collars. There was a lot of square bamboo in Don the Beachcomber. Uh, Sam's Seafood in Sunset Beach. It's very rare. And I don't know why they stopped making it because it's good for structural stuff. Like, I think they used to use it for building, you know, like building buildings in the 50s. I guess they don't need, they don't need to build buildings out of bamboo anymore, so. The tiles you see are of Chinese soapstone. The globular lanterns are actually glass floats from Japanese fishnets. The decorative rocks on the back bar are mainly volcanic some being not rock at all, but wood, petrified wood. The large shells in the back bar are, or were, man-eating clams from the Indian Ocean. Some weighed 650 pounds alive. Your ashtray is of the same species. Presumably, the smaller ones eat smaller men. The dried and hollow fishes hung from the ceilings are blowfish, and the hanging objects, which look like bananas, are, well, they're bananas. <laughs> That's what it says right here. The mattings on the walls and ceilings are mainly nerpa, niui, and padana, all of which are hand-woven coconut palm and are from Samoa and Tahiti. The tapas figure panels on our walls are from Fiji, Tonga Tapu, Tahiti, Samoa, and Hawaii. These tapas are made from mulberry bark and hand-blocked with native vegetable dyes. That's all very well and good and very interesting, especially to people like us who want to be able to transport back to the luau back in 1954 and go, what were the tabletops like? What was on the wall? What were hanging? Glass floats from Japan and, you know, woven matting. But of specific interest, especially to me, are the tikis. The large and delightfully unlovey carvings about you. A tiki is a pagan god, an idol. While today a majority of South Sea's neighbors are of Christian faith, respect and deference is still extended to the gods of the elders. And we have with us here at the Luau such tikis as the god of rain, the god of sun, the god of war, and others. The especially large mouth tiki is the god of drink, the loud mouth one. The tiki with the most ample tummy is our favorite, perhaps because he's the god of food. Now feast, the Luau is about to begin. Oh man, aloha, como mai no ka haile. The words mean simply welcome, come in, my house is yours. Sign Stefuma. Hi, talking chief of the Luau. Oh, and it says here, free souvenir menus available at our gift shop. Now, if that doesn't tell you the tale of what the Luau was like and what the creativity of Stephen Crane was like, you know, I don't know what is. The funny thing to me is that I know that he was trying to paint a picture of the place being built by the natives of the different regions of Fiji and Tonga and Samoa and Hawaii, but in reality, I think most of that stuff came from a place in Whittier, Oceanic Arts. Same guys that made this, 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 
this stuff and these, just about all the decor and just about all the tiki bars. Would I order this again if I got this? It's just a, it's a very aggressive cocktail, like the War God. If it came in this mug, I might be apt to order it again. But this is a complex, boozy cocktail. If you are a fan of rum and strong alcohol forward cocktails, this might be for you. Let me know what you think. Make this thing at home. Mention it in the comments below once you make it and go, dude, it was great. Or go, ugh, don't want to do that again. Either way, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed visiting the Luau with me. Um, I think this is a very special episode. I really love the history and the legacy of vintage tea. Aloha. We've heard about Vint, uh, wait, 1945. And then he got divorced from Lana Turner. What? It's a, hey, this is what the, oh, where's my measuring thing? Okay, we're gonna do, um, stand by. So what we're gonna do next is fill this in, okay. Yeah, I was working hard on the breezeway today. You can see there's some Henry's roof tar in my elbow. My hands aren't, dude, I washed my hands and washed them and washed them and washed them. They're better than they were, but they were a mess earlier. I am killing myself trying to get this place ready for the party that we're having here on November 11th. Unfortunately, it's already sold out, so if you don't have tickets, I'm afraid uh, that you're gonna have to wait till the next one. But if you do have tickets, you're gonna get to see a brand new breezeway. It won't be done, but you'll see it very well on its way. I'm super excited about that. It's better as it gets more watered down. And then from Surfside Sips, we're gonna be using a Spikes Breezeway cocktail hour. And then from Surfside Sips, and then from Surfside, and the hanging objects which, and the hanging objects which,